a tutorial recording. Okay. Hi. I hope the audio is working. I hope the video is working. I have my chat over here. That's why I'm looking over here sometimes. Also the technical stuff. And you can see on the screen, I have the post from Patrick Connor with all the information about the latest update. So we will check out all the different things. Um, you probably know my channel. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria. And I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So we had recently a really big update. You can see it's a huge list of new stuff that we will look through uh, and see what's new, what kind of improvements we have, what kind of new tools we have to play around with. I looked into some of them, not all of them, so we can explore them uh, together. And of course, you can write stuff into the chat if you want, ask questions or even help me out if I don't understand something because I don't know everything about Affinity Photo, even though I have done a lot of different uh, tutorials. And going through this list, I have to admit there's a lot of stuff I've never used. <laughs> I've never even known that Affinity Photo can do that. And now I'm seeing that. So that's really interesting. An update can really bring a new view uh, to a software and the different things it can do. The most happy I am with uh, the brush update. So we will look at that first, also because it's the first part here on the list. And there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, let's go over to Affinity Photo. I already have a picture on here because I tested around a little bit. Uh, we can delete this guy, make a white background. So uh, turn off transparency. And I have a pixel layer here so I can use my brush. And you can see here, uh, let's go back to our list here. So it introduces sub brushes mechanics. So you can use it. It sounds like you can use several brushes at the same time. This is what I was expecting. And I'm really happy that they have been, uh, how do you say, uh, being coached or worked together with uh, Paolo Limoncelli. He makes really great brushes. You can buy them on the uh, affinity uh, page store page. Um, uh, so real input from a real artist, that's always great. What I found is it's not actually brushes. So what I was expecting is you select the brush and then you can add several other brushes, but that's not really what's happening. What you can do is um, you can, for example, let's select a round brush here and yeah, let's leave black as the color. Uh, let's select the brush tool. You can see I can draw here and when I go into more, I now have this tab here and it says sub brushes, but you can't actually directly or I didn't find any way to directly uh, select a brush. Instead, you can, um, well, you can add a round brush. Uh, you could add bitmaps. So you can add uh, uh, nozzles, you can add pictures um, and with that you can do, you can create several brushes and it's actually pretty simple to create um, different, uh, different brush nozzles ba basically. Um, so we can do that right now actually. Let's uh, create a new um, file here. Resolution isn't, well, isn't really that important. Well, it should be high actually. Uh, let's go here to, where does it say custom? That's preset. Custom, there we go. Um, pixels, there, I can set the size. So let's go with 1600 by 1600, so it's square. Okay, uh, let's close this real quick. And I will just write in here different letters so we see what is going on. Let's write A real quick here, just for the example. Let's center this A export as a PNG with a transparent background and um, uh, oh god let's go to tutorials YouTube do I have something oh there's live stream okay cool new folder um, live let's call this live real quick uh, there we go oh by the way because this is a live stream and I'm doing this like real time it's more stretched out in time than a normal tutorial would be because normally I prepare like an hour or something 
and make the complete process on my own and then record it in like 15 minutes and uh, put it online. So now it's, of course, a full process. We go through everything together. Uh, let's export B. And then, oh, I did untitle. Well, anyways, let's go for C. Export. You can see in a second what I'm doing here. It might be a bit confusing right now. And let's go for D. There we go. In remembrance of the D-Day, we also have the D. There we go. Okay, so now what we can do here is we go in here to sub brushes on our brush and we can import our bitmaps. There we have them. And so now uh, when we go... Why is it all in one? Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's remove that. Add a bitmap A and then add a bitmap C and... Oh, it's not in order. Anyway, D... B. Can I move them? I can move them. That's good. So I can rearrange them. That's a good thing. A, B, C, D. And so I can now go in here for every of these brushes and edit them in the settings. You can see here the size. I can make them bigger. I can add um, dynamics for the scatter, for example. You can see scattering around. And I can do this also for every of these other brushes. Dynamics, scattering, whoops, there we go. Also the size. And now when I paint with that, you can see that, okay, we have some bees in here. We, make, we have to make them um, bigger. One second. Let's make them bigger. There we go. So you can see here, um, actually it's a bit hard to see. Uh, one second. <laughs> Sorry. Let's make them even bigger. Let's make B really big. And you can see here, okay, now they are too big. So you can play around with them. And I'm really looking forward to, to creating different brushes with this. But you can now see that we have A and B in there. And of course, our source, our first brush, which is the black uh, line in the middle. Let's delete this real quick. Whoops. Nope, didn't want to do that. There we go. So we have a clear ground. And you can see here, you can work like this. Of course, not with letters. Normally, you would create different kind of um, brushes that interact with each other and do really interesting things um, with each other. But another thing that is really cool, and this is... Um, uh, apart from the sub brushes you can do is that... Um, where does it say? Uh, here, the random nozzle. Should we go by the list? I, maybe we should go by the list. So what does it say next? The brush engine has been improved. Okay, that's cool, but we can't really show that. The symmetry. Let's let's look at the symmetry next, right? Um, is this this part is clear, or should I should I go into more detail about these kind of sub brushes? So the let's just recap it real quickly so you can for the and this is by the way is an important point the main brush sets the main size for the brush and the other brushes what i found they can't go bigger than the main brush which makes sense but also is maybe would be cooler if you could maybe go bigger than the main brush but anyways it makes sense that uh, you can do that uh, that the, the main brush is the actual size of the brush then you can of course set all the dynamics for your main brush and then individually for that you can set all the dynamics for each of the sub brushes so they are actually brushes um but i didn't th i didn't find any way where you can actually import can you just drag them over? I don't think so. Let's because I didn't try that. Let's try that. Oh, you can. Holy shit. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> there we are learning something right away. <laughs> okay, I did not know that. This is really great. So you can actually use sub brushes. So now, oh wow. Okay, that's that's really awesome. Okay, so you can do really crazy brushes. Well, you can know already that my next brush set is coming because I really want to play, uh, play around with these dynamics. That is really amazing. I didn't, I didn't know that you can just drag them in here. It's, 
Sometimes I wish they would have a little bit more information here, like a little text that says drag them in here or a little like a box where I can select the brushes because it just, it says add bitmap. So I thought that's the only thing you can do. Okay, anyways, let's come to this other function and it is really cool. You can play so much with that. That's the symmetry. Let's go with a basic brush. Let's take uh, maybe a nicer color than black. Um, there we go. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Is this? That's a good size. Okay, so um, and up here you can see there's a new point up here and that's a symmetry. And you get this line and suddenly you have these two uh, points that follow each other. So you can do stuff like this. And the cool thing is it goes up, it goes in here, goes up to 16. Interestingly, uh, on the website it says up to 32 way. But maybe the way is because it's mirrored, so that's 16 times 2. I'm not sure why it says 32 here and 16 in the program. But now when you draw here, you can do, okay, maybe this brush is a little bit too thick. Ah, uh, there we go. You can do really awesome kind of designs, as you can see here just wiggling around your, your mouse a little bit, or even if you have like a tablet that you can draw on, you can make really interesting um, designs with that. And uh, kind of this mantra kind of style, of course, work with different colors uh, to create really cool stuff. So this is really, really nice. You can see here, very quick and very interesting stuff that you can create with that. So this is one of the functions I really like. And by the way, uh, when you look up here, um, it says mirror. So when you look at the points, when I go to the left, all of them go to the left. But when I go mirror, they go towards each other like it's a glass mirror. So it works a little bit different. And of course, you can create different designs with that uh, compared uh, to your uh, normal mode with the symmetry mode right and then we have also a button here that says lock and this is at the at the first when I was using that because you can rotate this you can see here I can rotate um, uh, the kind of axle or angle and you can also move the center point so you can move this over and uh, then move this again to another point and create different designs here and um, this seems like it would be very easy to just click on that by mistake, but you can lock that and then it's you can't click on it anymore until you unlock that. So that's also really, really useful. So yeah, I mean, really powerful stuff that we now have and symmetry is so cool, especially when you draw something, when you have a graphic tablet or you work on your iPad, I hope this is also an iPad, I don't know, uh, then symmetry in design or painting and all this kind of stuff is really cool. By the way, I should check uh, the, 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 um, our um, uh, chat real qu uh, quick. Uh, can we find a list of all the changes? Oh, okay. Hey, uh, Antonio, thank you for uh, posting the list. One second. I think, wait, is this? Yeah, show. There we go. Okay. I think now you can, everybody can see it or do I have to post it again? Because you can't normally post links. So now I have uh, enabled that. It's 16 times 2 because of the canvas, hence 32. Okay, cool. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Okay, so uh, let's see what else we have in here. Wet edges and accumulation are now available on color brushes and brushes with HSL variants. Actually, I don't know what that means. <laughs> even I, even though I created a brush pack, I'm not sure what that means. On wasn't that the way label on color brushes before the wet edges? And I, I'm not sure. So yeah, but it's a way label now. So yeah, well, I mean, you have you have seen wet edges before uh, on on designs. Let's take a brush uh, here. By the way, I have some of these dope brushes. So um, does this have a wet edge? No, but if I click here on wet edge, it looks like it's it's more wet. Like you you draw with wet color and on paper or something like that. You see, it's it's like. Uh, one of them looks rather dry and this one looks rather wet and then we have this one which looks a bit more dry. So that's the wet edge basically. 
Uh, and now they are available for color brushes. I'm not, I'm not really sure what that means, actually. If you know, please tell me. Uh, version seems to be running efficiently. Ah, uh, yeah, it's um, it works efficiently, but I I found that with the symmetry, like when you go up to sixteen and have one of these art brushes, it's getting really slow. You can see here it starts like turning into a slideshow, so that's not great with the symmetry. But probably you wouldn't use this kind of brush with a sixteen times symmetry. I don't know. Um, so it slows down pretty hard uh, with the symmetry in here, uh, with, with more elaborate brushes. But I think that's a normal bin when you have brushes which have a lot of settings and textures and uh, all these kind of nozzle styles in them and stuff like that. Okay, uh, let's turn them off. By the way, I didn't, I didn't really see or find a way how to reset the symmetry because you can see now I have, um, I have changed the position. Let's unlock that. Uh, can move this around, but maybe, maybe I can right click. No, I can't right click. I didn't really find there isn't really. I didn't see a button where you can click to reset to center point and to zero percent of the rotation. So. Either I'm not seeing it or it's missing. Um, yeah, anyways. So uh, let's see what else we have in here. Uh, all brush tools now support left and right. Oh, this is a really cool function, by the way. Uh, let's go for a normal round brush and I will make it rather big and then turn the shape into an ellipse. So it looks like this. Let's make it even bigger. And the cool thing now is, first of all, you can use your arrow keys. You can see here, let's click. And then when I press my right arrow key, it starts to turn right. And when I press my left arrow key, it starts to turn left. So I can, uh, with the arrow key, change the direction of my brush, which uh, for artistic reasons can be super useful. And I think also for design reasons, because uh, when you when you create brushes, uh, because when you look down there where it says rotation, you have this lever and this lever, it goes from zero to 50% and that's that. And then you can't rotate it anymore. And now you can. You have to click on the canvas so uh, you're actually in the brush and then you can see it goes over 90% uh, and then jumps back to the other side. Um, so that's really useful. And also, of course, live use because I can close this window and I can uh, rotate uh, the brush without having to go into, um, the, into the brush settings. And this also, of course, is very useful if you have... Uh, for example, these cloud brushes here, you can find a lot of stuff like that on the internet. And now if you want to rotate them, so any kind of texture or picture brushes, if you want to use them in your picture, you can now rotate them to the right position. It makes the process a lot faster, a lot easier. So it is really, really cool. Um, wait, I just seen this before. Uh, the Lex GPU acceleration should be faster once we get i thought i thought they added a uh, cpu acceleration or was it just for some things i think for for raw files they added gpu acceleration there it says like new gpu architecture but that's for raw files maybe it's not for brushes um fixed rb air brush import would ignore random controllers what is an rb air brush there is a lot of stuff i don't know actually it's really interesting. I learned so much from this update. Let's let's Google this real quick. What is an RB airbrush? Oh, is is like is this just like a Photoshop brush? Maybe it's just a Photoshop brush. So if now Photoshop brushes would actually work and you don't have to uh, recreate all the kind of settings, that would be really great. Um, fixed RB air import. So this apparently has been fixed. That's great. I'm not sure if it's completely working because probably a lot of functions uh, that f uh, uh, Photoshop has for brushes are not uh, there yet in Affinity Photo, but it's cool that they um, improved it at least. That's good. Uh, L, what? What is that? Symmetry mode. If you hover over the line, you get a double arrow option to click and edit the line. What? Wait, let's check that. 
Oh, I probably should switch to another um, kind of brush. The double arrow and then? Then what? If you hover over the line, you get a double arrow option to click and edit the line. Yeah, you click. Yeah, I know. You can rotate it, but how can I reset it? How can I reset it to center and to a zero percent rotation? Because I don't. There is no. I don't see any value. Even down here in this transform window, there isn't really a value for that. It may be here for view. There is guides, assistant manager snapping manager but i don't see a symmetry manager so hmm, that's a point of feedback maybe comes with the next update i don't know or maybe it's in there i didn't see it uh oh gpu was what gpu was added for max and ipads but not for pc uh, but max are not that great with gpu right they don't have these kind of elaborate graphic cards because it's not like really gaming computer right that's that's a strange decision to go first to mac uh, instead of um instead of windows okay so what else do we have um so it says the raw processing engine has been re uh, rewritten is producing better performance better results uh, files now load quicker so this is not really something we need to look at actually it loads quicker so yeah um, uh, x trans sensors is probably a camera sensor I'm not sure <laughs> I'm sorry I don't know that we can look that up let's check this why do we have Google if we don't use it uh, unlike most CMOS sensors featuring a conventional ba Bayer filter array, x trans sensors have a unique 6x6 pattern of photosites. Okay, so it's a kind of uh, sensor for your camera. Interesting. Okay, cool. So, um, re-implemented support for this kind of sensor. The denoise algorithm has been rewritten. It produces better results and takes advantage of the new CPU architecture. So that's in here. Maybe it's just for Max. I didn't try that yet. Hot pixel removal automatically by the Serif Lab engine. That's also cool. Something I can't test right now. Um, Oh, this is something that's nice. So you have this profile lens correction um, with a... Um, wasn't there something about a database in here? Are more stable applied quickly? So it kind of recognizes automatically your lens and then uh, you can apply a correction by that, which is really nice. Uh, the histogram in the developer persona is now present in the output color space as opposed to always being linear. Okay, I'm not... I'm not working too much with RAW, so I really can't tell you too much about the stuff that's going on in here because I mainly work with JPEG. As you know, I'm not really a much of a RAW user, um, only for like special occasions. Uh, show out of a recreate focus. Yeah. Let's go, let's go on to the filters. <laughs> I know more about that. Um, so we have a procedural texture filter and this one is really strange. Um, first of all, let's uh, uh, go in here and just, I don't know, let's say landscape. Lens, wait, I can't type, scape, there we go. Is, by the way, this stock thing, it was there before, or is this new? Because I've never seen that. And it uses Unsplash, which is really my favorite site uh, for any kind of pictures that you can use for free. So most of the tutorial pictures I use come from that site. Uh, let's resize this real quick. It gives here a little bit of information about the artist and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, the downside is, and that is really strange, is that you can't open the picture uh, uh, directly you have to um, drag it into a file that you have created before so you can't right click and create file from this file and if you double click it goes to the website which is also strange why doesn't it open the file in affinity photo when I double click but anyways it's in here and you have free stock photos for the rest of your life or at least as as many pictures as you want as long as the, the the page is there and you have unsplash you have pixel and you have pixbay uh personally i think that unsplash has by far the most professional pictures but 
Uh, Pixbay is also nice and also has some other stuff because Unsplash is only uh, is only photos and Pexel I've never used so I don't know. We can check that out. Um, Xtrans is Fuji Film. Okay, interesting Fuji Film. I I honestly I didn't know they are still in business. Fuji Film they make cameras really? Hey, we have to. <laughs> I'm sorry, have to Google that real quick. Fuji Film. Fuji film. I remember them from the good old film days. Yeah, that's the kind of camera that I think of when I think of Fuji film. That's not a DSLR, is it? Oh, it's oh no way. This is a digital camera? Holy shit. That looks like vintage. Oh, that that's actually cool. I don't know if they are good cameras, but they look awesome. That's like what is this? Like 80s? Late 80s kind of design style for cameras? That is awesome. Okay, I have to look into that. It's even mirrorless. Wow, okay. Hey, with leather. Probably fake leather, I don't know. Yeah, okay. You can look like really old school, yeah, photographer. And it says Fuji Non. Okay, interesting. Well, anyways, let's go back to Affinity Photo. <laughs> You're not here to look at old Fuji cameras or new Fuji cameras, whatever that is. Uh, so let's go into the filter. We want to talk about the filter, and that's really a strange one. Uh, they have great mirrorless cameras. Yeah, I have to check that out. Um, so, uh, oh God, where was that? It's somewhere in here. Oh, I have to, I have to rasterize that. Uh, let's do this real quick. Bam, so now it's an image. And now we can go in here to procedural here under colors. We have procedural textures and then and again, I don't know why they do it like this. You have this picture and then it doesn't really explain what to do with that. And you have some presets. And the crazy thing is now when you go onto the presets, let's go to uh, waves like this. It, I don't know if you can see this and I, I can't really zoom into there is this kind of really crazy mathematical formula in here and then you have this lever down here and you can influence that a little bit so the waves change but ooh, you, I don't you have to be Stephen Hawking to use this filter what is this I don't understand well I don't know how to change this kind of formula because it's super complex and well, this has to be some kind of really DIY filter thing where you can experiment when you're good with maths to get out some new stuff, probably, or there's some filter packs, I don't know. And there's some other stuff, like you can invert colors here, uh, which gives you some cool effects, but again, I mean, you can click here uh, on these options, and then you also have, a, so this is RGB, and then you have also an alpha uh, channel, which makes things transparent when you click on them. And there is no levers at all. So this, I have to look into that. I don't know what that does, but it's it's really strange. It's, this is, at the one side, I think a really cool filter because it seems like you can do really crazy stuff with that. Look at this here. You can do like crazy things. And sometimes, yeah, it's a bit strange, um, but most of the time it's it seems really complicated and then down here you can click and add stuff like angle input and but you again you don't know where to connect this it says a and then you have a field where you could probably write something it says what's a decryption for the input optional so yeah serif i I didn't study math, so I don't know. What is this? <laughs> this is kind of a filter where it could be really cool, but it's very cryptic. But one thing that I really like, and this is the main thing why I really like this filter, it has Perlin noise in here. And this is actually real Perlin noise, not the fake version that we had before. This is actually calculated Perlin noise. And you see here the formula, whatever that does. Like, of course, calculating the Perlin noise, but... 
I don't understand the formula, but you can go in here and uh, change these uh, levers and you get results which are actually Perlin noise. And that is really cool because before we had this kind of fake version that's I think was based on one JPEG that you could just zoom in and out of. It was really not so good. Um, or one downside I found with this is, for example, here you can see I can change these octaves and nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because it doesn't update for some reason. It only updates when I now move the lever again, which is really strange because then I change my settings. So I, if I don't want to change the settings, just this value, I still have to change the settings to get the update. So uh, they have to improve that a little bit. But other than that, I'm really happy we now have actual real pearl and noise and we can, this can be used for so many different effects. Um, some people change uh, to a few <laughs> Yeah, exactly. By typing mathematical stuff, you could add specific effects. Yeah, you can. And I, I can remember in the old days, maybe they still have it in, a, in a Photoshop, but in the old days, they also had this kind of thing where you can create your own filters in a really complicated way. But if you knew what to do, you could create really amazing stuff with that. You can also do these kind of ripples here. And I, I really wish they would have included a little bit more controls because like for people who are not math geniuses, you just have these two settings. So that's not the most advanced thing, but it's a start. I mean, it's a start. We have something, we have this kind of fur, which seems like Perlin noise with a little bit of a turbulence added to it. You can see here when I go to zero, it's actually Perlin noise. And then this looks furry. So probably we could do some cool stuff with that. And I will create some tutorials uh, that are using these kind of new effects, even though it's kind of, you can see it's kind of a short list, but I hope we will get some new cool stuff from the community. Yeah, we have this lava effect. And this, is, this reminds me so much of the old uh, uh, Photoshop days, like, Oh God, when was that? The late 90s, like 98 or like the 2000s, 2001, 2002, you had these kind of this kind of stuff in Photoshop. Um, and it was fun. I mean, we could do some really cool stuff. There's like oils in here. And I hope this is the start where we get to see some kind of charcoal and oil paint effects and all these kind of stuff where we have filters um, that follow the structure in the, the photograph and then apply it to it. At the moment, as you can see, I don't think it's happening because we are on the picture picture layer, but uh, the oils don't seem to follow anything in the picture. So it doesn't really react to the image, um, but it's a good starting point at least. So yeah, crazy filters. We have that now, we have crazy filters. If you're a math genius, please make some presets so we can download <laughs> and actually use that. Then we have the Voroni filter and that's also cool. Uh, let's check that out to go a little bit uh, less. Um, is for, for ground fog accompanied by gradients. Yes, absolutely. Perlin noise is really great for fog and all these kind of effects where you need some kind of irregular structure. So that's really nice. Uh, let's go in here again. I think it's also on the colors. There we have Voroni. I hope it's Voroni. Vo vo Voronoi. Voronoi. I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyways, it's this. And it's, well, it's a cool effect. So you can have like a irregular uh, mosaic. So that's pretty nice. And you can change the line width. Can you actually change the line color? No. I thought the main color is maybe the line color, but apparently it's not the main color. So, hmm, am I missing something here? Hmm, I think you could probably select color and then replace um, the black color in here. So that's nice. It would be also cool if you could maybe have this as an alpha, but again, you can select the black color and then make it that. Uh, so this is kind of a mosaic effect and you can uh, decide on the cell size. And of course you can also blend this uh, with the layer and create a lot of interesting effects. So that's pretty nice. Um, it would be cool if they had created a little bit more adjustments. So maybe you can change the shapes of those or maybe have an irregular, uh, uh, how can I say, saturation or brightness or stuff like that. So you can be more creative. Right now we only have the cell size and the line width, but it's a good starting point and we can do some great stuff with that. So yeah, pretty cool. Okay, let's go. 
What else do we have? Um, yeah, it looks like a glass mosaic. That's pretty nice. So yeah, it's more it's more organic compared to the to the classic uh, pixelated effect. Uh, Denoise clarity shadow highlight filters have been rewritten. That's cool. And they are also now um, by using a developer persona. Uh, using the technology from the developer persona, um, the clarity filter, it's in here under live filters and also under the normal filters. I will go to the live filters real quick. You can see here you have a big list of all that stuff. There is also uh, the procedural textures down here, which you can use as a live filter. And the Voronoi filter is also in here. And up here we have the clarity filter. And um, what I think is... It's a bit weak, maybe. It's cool that's in there. Um, you can go 100% and that's that. So you, if you type 500, it jumps back to 100. And I mean, the outcome, if you see here, it looks pretty nice, but maybe it could be a bit more intense. I thought it's a bit, because I like, I mean, I understand if the effect goes to a level where it's applicable and it still looks good, but sometimes you want to go artsy and you want to go over the top and make it look crazy. And uh, I don't know why it's limited to 100%. It, it could be more intense, I think. Uh, and in this picture, it looks good. In another picture, it was barely visible. So that could be improved maybe. But it's really cool that they uh, improved that and it's in there as a live filter. So that's also very, very nice. Uh, so huge improvements. Uh, more live filters are now available. No, more filters are now available as live filters, including the new procedural texture filter. I've already shown that right now. Um, 3D programs. Yeah, they, uh, this, by the way, this is what I was expecting when I was reading procedural texture. I was thinking 3D because there is software out there. I don't know if you know. Let's uh, check this real quick because I think this could be really interesting for you. Uh, procedural textures. Um, where is the, what's the main thing here? Uh, one second. I mean, uh, let's go to images real quick. So when you look at uh, uh, um, example, please, at, at this, for example, here, this is, it could be, I think this is, 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 yeah, procedural texture. So this is not a photo for anything or something. It's different settings that you tweak around. Um, so you say, I want to have um, this kind of um squares and then I want them in a line and then I want several lines below but they should be off by this uh, much and then they should have checked uh, kind of lines and then I apply some noise to the top and I want to have some reflection on that part but not on the lower part and then suddenly it looks like this and this is what I thought is the procedural texture and you can create any kind of material uh, like the like brickstone and uh, uh, w whatever you want, wood, stone, metals, all kind of stuff. So procedural textures are really cool. I didn't find, um, let's, let's write here software. Uh, let's see, 2019. What's the main thing here? Substance painter, substance painter is the one. It's pretty expensive. It's not that cheap. Um, wait, let's, let's really go into that real quick just to show you the, the software, not on Steam, come on. <sighs> there we go. Is this the one? Products. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do this in the live stream, I don't know. Uh, designer, there we go. So oh, like this, this here, this kind of tapestry that like really looks amazing. That's a that's a uh, that's a texture created uh, that you can create in the software. Um, and this kind of this kind of stuff, everything is created in the software. It's not a photo or anything. Uh, so it's really all this kind of stone texture, wood texture, all this kind of stuff. So it's really really amazing. Okay, uh, let's go back to the actual program to Affinity Photo. Um, Three, uh, try typing a value into the live clarity filter. It 
I know some filters. Yeah, I, I, I did, but it didn't go. Like you can see that it jumps back. I think if you buy some filters, you can go over the top when you type a number that's bigger than the lever that you can push. But I think then in that case, the number stays. And in this case, it was jumping back to 100%. So, and also it looks the same. So I don't think you can go over the top in the case of the clarity filter. Um, Textures are seamless and are used for building materials. All the major apps use it. Maya, Modo. Yeah, I really, I really like uh, procedural texture software. It's really cool. Really cool to play around. If you, you can download Blender, for example. There you can also do that. It's for free. Um, but let's go back to Affinity Photo. Ah, uh, what else do we have here? No, the, we have been down here. Um. Improve polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar filters, which is this where it, it turns into a circle. Um, wow, my mouse. Okay, there we go. Where is this in here? I actually don't know. Ah, uh, there we go. So it looks like this, and you can do really cool effects with that. Um, which I can't do right now. I think I have a tutorial for the um, small world. Haha! <laughs> I can promote my own channel. One second. Let's do a little promotion, my friends, for my own content. Let's go to my channel. And there we go to search. And we go to um, little... Is it little little world? Yeah, there we go. Tiny planet. And this is where I use this kind of polar filter to create... Uh, you need like a 180 degree picture, like a really uh, long um, uh, panorama picture and you can bend it into this tiny world. So you can watch it in that kind of tutorial in here. So you now you know what to search on my channel, Tiny Planet Tutorial. Okay, let's go back. So these have been improved. Um, edit rounded dot uh, type uh, to the halftone filter. And that's kind of cool, actually. Uh, let's go back here. Um, and go into live filters and there you can see down here we have the halftone filter and the halftone filter uh, makes it look like it's an old uh, photograph uh, from uh, old magazine or something and uh, right now it's monochrome and you can say uh, you can see here it says uh, cosine and you can now turn it two rounds uh, maybe make the cells a little bigger uh, so before it was like this and now you can actually have round dots. And uh, this doesn't look like much, but when I turn this to color, this looks more interesting. And then we could, for example, go to um, soft light or yeah, let's go for a soft light, for example, reduce the effect a little bit. And you can see that we can have kind of a really cool effect. Of course, maybe not the best thing to use with a landscape, uh, but you can use it, for example, for a portrait um, or do some kind of interesting artsy effects around that. So it's really cool. And uh, you can see you can change for monochrome color, line, circular. Um, of course, when you have line or circular, the round effect is not there anymore. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. And this emulates how uh, magazines have been printed in the past. Or I mean, still they are printed like that. If you take a lens, a, what what is like a um, a zoom? What is this kind of round um, lens? It's a lens, right? Where you s see things larger. Lens, I think it's lens. And you look at the printed paper, you see these dots next to each other to create actually the color. So this is the the technique that's going on, and this is simulating it, so you get this kind of cool look uh, for that. Okay, let's go. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we have so much uh, things to go through still. Um, where, where, where have we been? There, round dots. A new lens correction filter, apply lens correction from the built-in lens, lens database. Um, I don't know if this picture, probably not because I've rasterized it. If we go to the developer persona and you go to lens correction, it says here lens profile distortion and then it says unsupported. So it, this picture here doesn't have the information of the uh, EXIF file in the EXIF file that's inside of your 
a raw file or your JPEG file, um, sometimes if it's actually there, uh, it, it saves all the kind of information like um, the, I don't know, the lens and the camera and the date and the exposure and all these kind of things. And it takes this information and uh, compares it with the database in Affinity Photo and then applies uh, uh, the correction from the light, right lens because every lens is built a little bit differently. So the correction to this, uh, I can say, optical distortion that's happening in the lens has to be for the model of the lens. Otherwise, it doesn't really work. It would change the wrong thing. So this is uh, why it's important to have this kind of database in here and actually have the right kind of adjustments happening. All right. Um, I hope that was kind of... Uh, Good to understand <laughs> what I explained. Um, bilateral blur accuracy improvements. I don't know what that means. Let's Google that real quick. Bilateral filter. What? What the? What is a? Does anyone know what's a bilateral blur accuracy is? Because I don't know. So much stuff. I don't know. Bilateral filter. Edge preserving noise reducing smooth filter. Anyways. Okay. Uh, magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. That's also good. Yes. Okay. Um Blender No, Blender is free. That's what I said. Blender is free. Blender is no longer free? No. Ah, come on. Blender? No. It's the wrong side. Uh, let's go to. I yeah, this can't be. It's open source. Download there. You can download it. Is it? Did they change that? Anyways, it's not. We have to go uh, back to our, uh, our live stream. Sorry. <laughs> Even if it's now for pay, I don't know. Uh, okay, so let's go for um, the HSL adjustment layer has been rewritten oh that's that's a good one that is really a good one so you go in here and you go uh, to your adjustments down here in hsl and you can remember that we have just this line down here and this would change all the colors in the picture and sometimes give you really crazy uh, results but what you can do now is um you can select color ranges and um it works not as good as I want to but it works so um, I, I would have some extra wishes so you can select some predefined colors down here which is nice and you get these four dots and they define basically the area in which um, the change is now going to be applied so you have you can see this jumps around uh, but what you can also do is you can take um, so you have this kind of selection of colors here. You can take the color picker and then say, I want to have this blue here. And so this color changes to that blue here. And now if I change the stuff, it's applied um, to the blue area. You can see here this kind of uh, 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 peach colored orange area back there is not changing, but the rest of the picture is changing. Also, most of the grass is not changing. and. Also, you can move these dots around uh, to make the area smaller that is um, uh, adjusted. So you can see now even less of the grass, even less of the sky is um, being changed by that. So that's pretty cool. The reason why I say it's not uh, completely as good as I want to is because you don't have a, a setting here that where it fades into another color and you would think that these points here are basically like a gradient that would make it softer but i found that it's still kind of edgy and pixelated at the edges so it's um inside inside of a gradient when there is a color so you have like water or a blue sky and you only it it affects some parts of the sky but not other parts you suddenly get these kind of pixelated edges and that's not so not a hundred percent great but i guess you can overcome that by probably applying the effect like duplicating the layer applying the effect and then blending the new adjusted layer into uh, the original picture 
and blurring it before a little bit so you get rid of these kind of pixelations. That could work. I will do a tutorial about that um, sometime soon. But that's a really cool new adjustment and really, really needed and very welcome that you can do this now. That you can uh, 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 you can select color ranges where you want to do this hue shift and saturation and luminosity adjustment, which is very, very nice um, to have. And you can see you can do some really great things with that and completely change um, the characters. Oh, by the way, here you can see this. When I go crazy with my settings... Um, when I zoom in here, now I can see how extremely pixelated the stuff is getting uh, based on the selected color. Uh, let's move this here a little bit. And uh, it's probably kind of, uh, maybe, maybe with these dots, if you're careful in adjusting them, you can actually make it rather smooth. So I have to experiment with that a bit more. Uh, but then maybe you also lose the, the impact of the change. So, yeah. But it's interesting that you can do that. It's really nice that you have the ability. And, of course, um, you can blend this. You have the, all these kind of different blend modes. And, of course, the opacity. So it's a lot of additional adjustments that you have uh, that you can do. And the color picker is really nice that you can go exactly uh, uh, to a certain starting color and then... Uh, change the range with these four dots. So that's a really cool um, new adjustment to have as an adjustment filter. Okay, um, let's go on. Uh, what else does the chat say? One second. Is Fanny going to add smart objects for mock-ups? I haven't seen anything about smart objects yet. I have to say yet. I didn't, I didn't read through all of the lists, so we have to go there. Um, then... Um, this feature is on Affinity Photo Roadmap implementation. Okay, cool, cool, very nice. Good, so uh, what else do we have? So the HLS adjustments we have. The level adjustment layer now supports output levels as common feature requests. The levels adjustment layer now. Ah, okay, let's check this because I think I know what that means. Oh, -ho, that's good. So now, because at the beginning, you, you can remember, we only had these two lines and then the gamma line. So you can have this kind of input, uh, you can adjust and um, also the gamma. But now we also have an output um, level. So you can adjust uh, not only what is coming in and kind of filtering the stuff that's coming into, but also what is going out of the filter. So that's very nice that it's kind of separated. That is cool. That is very, very nice. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, cool. So you can see here when I... So here we have on the here we have the histogram of all of the picture on top. And of course, we have here the different kind of um, colors in our picture and also the alpha channel. And um, when I use this here, I would limit uh, the values that are coming in. You see, so this is why it's getting brighter because I'm cutting off all these bright values here and saying this is the brightest value. So everything be beyond this value to the right side would be white and everything here uh, to the left would be completely black. But now I have also the output filters and they work differently. So you see, if I move this in, you actually the picture is going darker and here it's going brighter. So the black values are getting brighter and the white values are getting darker. So this is really nice, gives you a lot more adjustment than before. So that's really, really great um, new addition uh, to the layers filter. makes it a lot more useful um, than it used to be. That's very nice. Awesome. Um, sip of water. Hmm. The white balance adjustment layer has been rewritten. Just technically or white balance? Okay, just technically because there doesn't seem to be new um, features in here. It's it's the same, I think. Color picker, click something for auto adjustment or you can do it by hand. So it's probably working better. They fixed something inside the filter, but the functionality seems to be um, the same from kind of the interface is the same. 
Uh, the selective color adjustment layer has been rewritten. So probably also the same. It doesn't have any changes to the GUI. Um, like the interface is just, um, yeah, more function, which is pretty cool. You can see here the peachy background turns into a pink with this kind of adjustment. Really useful. You can do some really great stuff with that. Uh, we are, by the way, you can see here colors. We are only adjusting the reds. You can have a lot of different colors in here that you can adjust. That's very nice. Awesome stuff. Um, if I go too fast or you want to see something extra, please tell me in the chat. I try to um, read it um, and see what's what's coming in. Uh, features. Hey, hey, Frank, how are you doing? I haven't heard from you in a while. Are you? What did you do? Have you been on vacation or something? Okay, cool. We should talk. Uh, we should talk soon on um, uh, via email. I don't use my Discord anymore. You, I have my Reddit now. So because I'm not a chat guy, I'm I'm more like a a classic forum guy where I can come back some days later and then answer this stuff. Okay, cool. Um, let's go and see what else is here. Uh, so, uh, PSD import export of adjustments has been improved. That's cool. Uh, the vibrance adjustment has been rewritten, so also technically improvement, but not interface. Recolor adjustment layer has gained a lightness slider. Oh, recolor. Uh, let's let's hide this here. Um, recolor. Where are you? Recolor. There we go. Lightness. This wasn't there before. I don't remember. Didn't they have lightness slider before? It's interesting. I thought this was always here, but okay. Apparently that's new and recolor is nice, especially nice when you use it with the blend modes, because I think like when you use it just like a recolor, you get some really funky results, but you can see here when you, for example, with soft light, you can really dramatically change um, the look of a picture in seconds. So this can be super useful. Um, for quick adjustments or giving like a certain style or stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and by the way, I want to bring more tutorials about different kind of styles. So if you want to suggest styles to me, either you want to see, uh, you can uh, send me uh, just like a comment on, on my YouTube videos or on my Facebook page, you can also send me messages. It's pretty cool. Uh, okay. What else do we have? Layers, layer panel, edit option for transparent background for thumbnails. Oh, that's that's kind of nice what we have now uh, with these kind of new viewing options. So you, as you know, we have this kind of super tiny preview in here, but now um, you can go in here and set uh, the thumbnail size. Uh, you can set it to medium and then you can also set it to large, which is kind of nice. It's not super large, but it's a bit better. So that's um, good uh, for, yeah, screen size, but also for eyesight. This is a really good uh, new addition. And also another addition, let's add a shape in here. Um, maybe make a different color. So you can see now it is just red and, oh, maybe it stays red. Let's see. Checkered background. No. Okay, good. So you can see now we have here checkered background behind that, which gives me a bit more information that this is a transparent background. So it's uh, sometimes useful um, to have that. That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. So you can now have this kind of view, give you a bit more information, give you bigger thumbnails. Uh, so it's uh, faster to work with that because you can see in a second what's going on, on on the different layers. That's pretty cool. And another addition that has been added is when you right click on your layer on the very low part here, um, you have these colors and the colors help you because you can now color code um, your layers. So let's do this for some layers. You can see on the right side now I have different colors in here. And this is super nice when you kind of develop for yourself a system where you say, okay, every pixel layer is red and every vector layer is orange and every text layer is violet, stuff like that. Then when you come back, you super quickly can see what is going on uh, in the different layers, what is happening, especially when you have the smaller thumbnails, you can now work super organized with that. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty nice to have. Um, okay, let's go back and see what else we have. Whoops, there we go. Uh, sorry, what does the uh, what does the chat say? One second. There are smart objects in Affinity Photo. They are called embedded documents. Yeah, you can you can embed uh, the original Affinity Photo document or Affinity Designer document. You can embed that and you can change that like a smart layer. Uh, you can't. Um, and this is the this is the biggest or the only downside. This if they would add that, it would actually be a really useful smart object, and that is that you can't uh, change it in the perspective. And and this is super useful for mockups. And a mockup. Let's uh, Google this real quick so you know what I mean. A mockup is this. Uh, so for example, you have here these kind of business cards, and normally you could buy this file, and uh, you would have a two D. Um, layer where you put your design and then in the original file this smart layer is already perspective correctly stretched onto the picture uh, with the different effects so it looks like it is perspectively correctly printed onto the paper and so you only have to put your you copy past your design in there save it once and then it's on there and this is why smart layers are so extremely important and affinity photo can't do it yet maybe they have added it i don't know uh they yeah added it to affinity photo uh but i haven't seen it yet also this kind of stuff like this you could do this easily in in, in photoshop with uh this kind of perspective stretching and liquefying all this stuff uh, to a, 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 a smart layer yeah this is why this kind of ability is super important so let's uh, let's go back to our list what does it say i can round and make it more circular what wait what sorry i'm confused uh i finished so does it work probably on bottles etc if you use it to place image computer mockups I, I don't think that bending works so great. I mean, you can you can try to bend stuff in Affinity Photo, but you have to be like uh, precise in doing it. It doesn't have like this Photoshop thing where you can put it on a 3D shape and it's actually bent uh, correctly onto that shape. Uh, so that's, that's a bit uh, more complicated in Affinity Photo. But of course you can, um, let's go in here real quick. Uh, you have to rasterize it, so that's a downside. So if I right click here, rasterize. Um, wait one second. Um, let's let's put a font in here, A, real quick, and then we go back to our um, topic. So let's take these two, and I will actually group them real quick, and then rasterize it so it's all on one thing. And now I can go in here and I could um, bend this down. Can I not? No, I'm in perspective now, sorry. Uh, so I can now bend this down and try to get it in a way where it actually looks like it's on the outside of a bottle, but it's not that ideal. I'm not sure if there's a better way. I didn't try to bend much stuff in Affinity Photo around bottles because usually you would, you would use a 3D program and then add it as a texture and then apply this bended rendering to the photo. It's more uh, realistic and you can also have kind of reflections and all kind of stuff on it uh, with, uh, with a 3D programs like, like Blender. You can do this in Blender. Um, okay, let's go back to our um, topic at hand. Uh, being able to create an embedded file inside another project that can you can edit separately would be so nice. You can do that. You can do that in um, Affinity Photo uh, already. You can't, like I said, you can't bend it, but you can uh, open any kind of Affinity Photo file and then uh, open it into uh, another file. Did, I think I did a tutorial about that, didn't I? Um, okay, so what else do we have? Allowing adding empty groups what allow adding an empty group from the layer menu that's cool i'm not sure what you do with an empty group maybe as a separator uh i mean yeah okay you can add an empty group be be before you can do a group with just one object and then drag the object out so you would also have an empty group 
but now you can do it from the menu, which is probably nice. Uh, I think it's for staying organized. And this is sometimes, for example, when you want to have a workflow, uh, you could... Um, where is my... Oh, uh, no. Is there no? Why does the menu not work? Am I missing something right now? What's going on? Ah, no, adjustment layer, layer effect. Oh, there's group layer, sorry, it's, it's, it's down here. So you can click and then... Okay, now I have created several groups inside of that. That's not good. Okay, it's creating the group inside of that. That's not so useful, actually. Okay, but you can create several groups and then name them in different things like um, I can say here texts and then here, um, I don't know, uh, shapes. And then you can, with these empty groups, save that as a master file and then always when you open that stuff, you already have this kind of um, groups in there where you can just drag your layers into these groups. So for workflow, workflow reasons, this can be really nice um, to set up these kind of things for your workflow for different kind of purposes. Um, by the way, I want to test this. When I switch this to yellow and then I create a new layer inside. Oh, it didn't create the inside. Ah! The layer is automatically switching the color. That's super. That's super neat. That is very, very useful. Let's make it red and then switch it over. Does it keep the yellow? No, it's it's switching to red. So that's pretty nice. So it's opening and then if the group is this color, it changes to this color when you create a new layer. Can I change the color still? Oh, I can still change the color. So that's cool. Um, it automatically switches it to the group color, but you can still recolor it on your own. If it already has a color, let's try this also. If it has a color, I, do it, I put it in here. It keeps the color, so that's nice. That's really nice to know. Uh, otherwise, you could be really like, it gets really complicated if you lose all your color settings. My cat wants out of the room. I have to open real quick the door. I'm back in one second. Ah, come on. All right, I'm back. <laughs> My cats want some attention too. All right, there we go. Uh, let's delete the, uh, the the layers we have here. Clean this up a little bit. Uh, what else do we have? Layers, layers, layers. Uh, we have the empty groups. That's good. New duplicate section item in layer menu. Duplicate now duplicated the whole layer, ignoring pixel selection. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Um, so basically, uh, this is rasterized. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So let's make a pixel selection here real quick. And then if I duplicate that, it duplicates the whole layer without the pixel selection. As you can see here, if I turn off the other layer, it's just, it's the full layer, which is nice, but... If I want to duplicate just a selection, is there no more method? It would be really nice if they had like duplicate with or without selection because now I would have to copy like, okay, this is not too hard to do. I can just um, like copy the selection and now I have it on a separate layer. So it's also good. Um, okay, but so they, they switch this over basically. Um, then we have the next one. Alt option is now used to make a pixel selection from the layer luminance. So the brightness of the values in the layer. You can now also hold shift to add the result to the current selection. Aha, uh -huh. okay, let's try this real quick. So do we have to click Alt or option? It's probably for Mac and PC, right? No, this didn't do anything. This selected everything. This didn't do anything either. Uh-huh. Ah, okay, so you have to press Alt and Option or Control and Alt on Windows uh, at the same time and then it makes a selection based on luminance. And now I could probably create an alpha mask 
Okay, there we go. So this is the alpha mask. Let's hide this and alt click. When you alt click, you see the content of the alpha mask as a black and white picture on your screen. So this is the luminance of the picture um, as a mask basically that you can now apply to other things or add to the mask you have already created, which can be super useful. So that's a really interesting new feature. Um, very useful. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So uh, control and control and alt on Windows uh, together and then click to make a selection based on the luminance. Um, hide show, show all layers option in layers menu. Hide show, show hmm. let's check this too. Let's make a new layer in layers menu. Ooh. Is it this? Edit all layers? No. Right click. Where's the layers menu? I thought this is up here is the layers menu, but I don't see I don't see this in here actually. Hide? I can hide this layer. So which is making it invisible and visible. Isn't that actually what you do when you click? Wait. No, okay. Uh, height lock. Wait, is something in the chat maybe? <laughs> where's the Where's this menu? Do you think that you have to redo some tutorials now that you have more? Well, yeah, that's kind of a big question. If I have to redo the tutorials, or I mean some things are of course outdated because now there's better techniques to do them in some cases or maybe old methods don't work anymore that way um probably i mean good for me because i can now do another 140 tutorials <laughs> without having to come up with new topics that's kind of nice but i don't i will not start at zero and do everything again now of course i will bring you new stuff and of course i mean at some point you will have repetition in your tutorials like when you look at my style tutorials you see a lot of techniques that i have already shown but um now it's more about the artistic style less about the technique because there's just so much you can do in the software and the rest is combination so uh, like if you think about i don't know playing a flute if you would say okay holding the fingers and blowing into the wooden stick is playing the flute then this is the end of the tutorial but everything that comes after that is really the artistic kind of thing so i want to concentrate more on that and mix that with all the kind of basic things to know about affinity photo because uh, the tutorial should not only be um inspiring and creative but also reflect my style and give you a certain reason why to come to my channel and not just have uh, like a, 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 like a index or like a, a list of of look up videos it should be like really the, where we can connect inspire each other work together to create really interesting artistic styles and so yeah but of course uh, some things need to have uh, be recreated or like explaining the new kind of ways how things work which is really interesting especially for this kind of adjustment layer with hsl and the new brushes and all that kind of stuff that you can do now and maybe the procedural textures which i don't understand what they do right now i i mean i understand what they do but not i couldn't do it on my own um sorry uh let's go back i'm talking too much uh where were we <laughs> I forgot where we were. What was the last topic where we did? Oh, well, the the hiding uh, hiding of the layers. Where's the layer menu? I didn't. I don't know. Uh, or ah, I think I know where it is. So let's create some layers. We go up here, layer menu. Ah, here. No, here. You can show all height, but show all. If there's a show all, why isn't there a hide all? That's so I have to select all and then I go to hide. There we go. So everything is hidden now and then I can go to layer show all, which also has a shortcut. You can see here on the screen right now for windows. And I mean, this is this is useful when you have all your layers hidden, but 
You know, the strange thing now is that these are still hidden, so... I don't know. It's kind of strange. I was, I was clicking on show all, right? Wait, let's show all. It's still unhooked. Strange. I don't know. That is really strange. I don't know what that means. Um... All right, um, what else do we have? Um, ability to either rasterize or rasterize and trim the layer. And this is really good. This is really something I wanted for a very long time um, because you can see here that I rasterized the layer, but it's still original size and it's really cool um, to have that. And what that means is, uh, let's go on here and uh, drag in another of these landscapes and you can see here that the picture is a lot bigger and usually what it would do if i rasterize it it would trim it down to um, the actual like resolution of my picture you can see here now it's trimmed down and if i move it the rest of the picture is gone which is oops which is sometimes a really big problem uh, but now when i click on rasterize it will keep the rest of the picture that's really cool so if i rasterize it now i can still move it around and the rest of the picture is still here so that is really really useful um, to have of course you have to remember that this will create a really huge um, file sizes if you have a lot of pictures that are not trimmed down so if you can trim down i would really suggest you do that and um Sometimes, and by the way, this is a hidden trick that I want to put in one of my next videos. Um, sometimes it's good to save the file with the command save as, because save as will um, drop a lot of chunk that's in your file and save it in a lot smaller files. So you can, in mind, it's not like super smaller, but you, if the file is like 250 megabytes, you maybe could go down to 180 or something like that. So it's pretty sizable what you can save. Um, so do that uh, once in a while. Okay, let's go back to our list and also to the chat. What does the chat say? Uh, it's already green screen. Thank you Leo, for making a choice. Yeah, you're welcome, Don. Uh, Sean has features. Hey, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, Good. So what else do we have? Selections. Significant improvements to the selection refinements. Oh, we have. I have not tried that yet. I have not tried this yet. Uh, let's uh, check out a picture. Uh, let's go for a portrait. Portrait. There we go. Do we have something with hair? Let's write woman in here. So we have a higher chance for longer hair. That looks good. Mm, maybe the background is not the best here. Do we have something better? Um, mm, that's good. Nope, that's blurry. Okay, it's not that easy to find a good picture to, to show that. Should we say, should we maybe try something else? I don't know. What else do we have in here? Uh, one second. Um, come on. <laughs> Let's write hair. Maybe this one. It's also not that great, actually. Damn it. This one. It's also blurry. Isn't there any picture where I have great hair and with a good background? Is this maybe a good choice? We could try this one. Let's give this a try, maybe. Uh, let's see. So let's zoom out and um, make this smaller. And then we can delete the other layers that we don't need. There we go. So let's rasterize this real quick. There we go. And then we have our, no, the CM paintbrush. I'm, ah, there's the selection brush. Okay, cool. So let's go smaller here. And 
I haven't used this in a really long time because it was not really great. So actually not sure if I'm doing this right at the moment. It's really crazy. You forget things so fast. Is this Okay, let's let's keep it like that and go to refine because we mainly want to see what's going on in the refined area. Wow, that's um preview black black and white overlay um okay let's zoom in here oh selection refine okay so if i brush over this is it able to actually select the hair black and white it's not that bad actually it's not that bad let's go up here i mean it is pretty complicated in this case because we have the um we have the water behind it so actually it's doing a pretty decent job i have to say that's nice let's go to black and white not too bad, not too bad. For this kind of noisy background, the selection of the hair is actually pretty nice. Oh, uh, okay, switched over. Let's go back to refinement. Let's go back to black and white. That's actually pretty cool. Let's draw in here. Yeah, nice. Okay. So I have to I have to test this more and may I will do a new tutorial on the um, on the uh, selection filter selection brush sorry uh, but actually the result is not too bad the hair looks pretty good very nice very nice so they improved this quite a bunch because before it was pretty much unusable so now you can see here and by the way as you can see here the preview mode you can you can select between different modes uh, that give you a good perspective on what is actually going on but you can see here we have a lot of these gray areas and that means that a lot of stuff from the background is still coming through so when you look at the uh where is it the white you can see there's a lot of uh, dirt basically dirt in here that's coming through so the black and white looks a lot better than the actual selection that's going on here but still not that bad actually for this kind of a noisy background it's kind of cool good so yeah they have improved the selection brush that's pretty nice uh what does the chest say uh is it in the layer is it in the layer in the top studio portrait Can I? Uh, thanks, mate. Something. Questions are doing in the show exam. Cards. Okay. Good. Um, what else do we have? Uh, when using selection tools with no pixel selections, default to new and add as appropriate. When using selection tools with no pixel selection. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's let's check this. So I make a selection and then I select the. Aha! It goes to add, and but this is still on new. When I go to this, it's still on new. I thought it automatically switches to add instead of new, but it doesn't. So what? I'm not sure. What does this mean? When using selection tools with no pixel selection, default to new, add as appropriate. Uh, with no selection okay so if there's no selection and let's go to subtract because i think this is the problem a lot of people they have been on subtract and then they wonder why nothing is happening uh so let's switch to another and now it's back on new uh, okay that's that's re actually re pretty useful because i also no it's uh, okay because i have uh, i have my selection <laughs> okay let's go to no selection and then i go to circle and now it's on new 
okay that's really useful because i found myself often also being in another mode and then not f seeing any selection not knowing what's going on so sometimes it takes some time that you realize that you have to switch the mode but now it's doing this automatically if there is no um, selection going on at the moment okay um, edit alpha similarity to select sampled color tool let's check this out um, we don't really have too much colors in here but anyways let's try this uh, select what did it say sampled colored select sample color tool yes okay so we could select a sample color like so and then we have tolerance i don't see an alpha setting here so here's a tolerance for the color did i miss something edit alpha similarity to select that sampled color tool I don't actually see a setting for alpha similarity. I thought it was kind of giving me more. I mean, alpha similarity, isn't that like the transparency similarity? Let's apply this and make a second layer with that selection, which looks like that. So we have a lot of transparency in here. Uh, let's set the background to transparency. You can see we have a lot of transparency there. Um, so now if I go to select sampled color no i thought maybe now there is kind of a choice here i don't i'm not sure what that means actually i oh wait one one second there was one thing i didn't click on ah down here is alpha okay so the mode is rgb cube uh, c lab cube intensity or alpha okay so now you can have an alpha similarity you can see that when I move this lever around, the result is different from the RGB result because it's dependent on the alpha. I suppose, I guess, it's dependent on the alpha. You can see here, this is selecting a lot more uh, things. And when I go to alpha, it's selecting a lot less things. So it's sticking to, um, when you look at the, uh, for example, here on this uh, left side, uh, the things that are less transparent are s getting selected first and then it's growing outwards to the more uh, transparent things, which is really useful. So that's a really nice addition. Okay, very cool. So we know that too now. Uh, what else do we have? And how much more do we have? Holy, oh, it's not too much. Okay, that's good. So I think we are like half through and maybe the rest is not that intense to explain. So um, let's see. Tools. The group tool shortcut now default to needing to shift key held to cycle. Option and preferences. Group tool shortcuts now default to needing the shift key held to cycle. Okay. So you need to hold the shift key now. As you know, I'm not using shortcuts very much. Um, there's two reasons for that. First of all, I want you to see what I'm doing. It would be kind of hard to follow if I would use shortcuts. And the other one, I myself want to see what I'm doing. And this is when I press shortcuts, I can never be 100% sure that's actually what I pressed was happening. So I rather do it by hand, which is a bit slower, but it's more comfor comfortable and I'm not in a rush. So that's okay. The crop tool has been rewritten. It now supports resolution changes, absolute pixel size, and has a much improved preset mechanism. That would be great because it wasn't that great in the past. Let's see. So we have here our crop tool and um, we have here um, unconstrained original ratio, custom ratio, absolute size. Uh, let's go to custom ratio. Is there, am I missing something? Where's the, shouldn't there be a list of custom ratios that you can select from? I think they changed that, right? It's now somewhere else. I'm not seeing it because before they had a list of different ratios. Original ratio 16 to nine, custom ratio, I can add that here. Unconstrained. 
absolute size. Absolute size is really nice because let's try this real quick. So I resize my crop and then I crop again and I go to document, uh, resize document and it's the same size. This is super useful and also kind of dangerous. Um, not that dangerous actually. So you have to remember that uh, when you crop something, uh, when you crop it smaller than the actual resolution, so you try to get, uh, you crop a smaller size from a, from a picture and want to have the same resolution, it's becoming really pixelated. So uh, you can only, without losing quality, um, crop from a higher resolution to a lower resolution. So you would have, for example, if you want to have a 1080p crop, you would have a you would have to need a file that's bigger, like 4K, and then you can crop a part out of that that has exactly a 1080p resolution without losing the quality. But then again, still you would have to have any kind of limit where you know if you go below that resolution. I don't think there's any kind of warning in here. Um, it would be nice. That would be that would be really a feature that would be needed. So, for example, the frame would go. Uh, one second, I, I was not doing the right thing here. Um, when I have absolute size, the frame should go red to warn me that now the picture uh, picture is going to be super pixelated because I'm cutting lower than the actual pixel pixel resolution of the picture. Um, custom ratio, but where's the list? They had, I think they had a list, right? Use the gear, you will find the ratio. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. I didn't know that. Cool. So now you have in here a ton of different. I don't know if it was actually more or less in the uh, previous version. It looks like it's a bit more in here. So you have different screen sizes. That's pretty nice. You go up to 4K, 2K, 1080p, 720p, all the kind of nice stuff in here. Um, then you have cinematic ratios, it's also nice. And um, US paper sizes. Is there also EU paper sizes? Oh, there we are. The ESO format, which is used in the EU, EU A3, A4, A5, A6. Maybe they could have added a bit more, but that's okay. And um, then you have photographic paper, and you have the kind of screen ratios, for example, one by one, that's Instagram. And then you have a 16 by 9 your TV or YouTube, stuff like that is on that kind of resolution. So that's nice. They would be it. I, I miss uh, still, and I don't know why they're not adding this, uh, ratios for the different kind of social media formats. Of course, they change all the time. I know that because like, especially Facebook is super crazy about changing their picture formats all the time uh, for unknown reasons. Uh, but still, maybe they could update that once in a while and then give you a new file or that would be really cool to have that but you can add uh, custom ratios in here and save them so that's also very nice to have so that's cool you can do that very nice all right uh what else do we have uh the sponge brush tool now gives more correct pleasant results there is a function i did not know is there what the what is a sponge brush tool Am I probably, it's probably something I know from Photoshop, but it has a really strange new name in here. We have the blur sharp median and smudge brush. And then we have the healing patch blemish impaint red eye brush. Pixel color. What is the sponge brush? I don't see a sponge brush. Okay, let's Google that real quick, sorry. Oh, I'm in the, again, in my, okay. Uh, sponge brush tool. What the hell? SpongeBob. <laughs> to selectively saturate or desaturate areas within the image. And it looks like a sponge. I've never seen that. <laughs> what? What is that? Where is this? Oh, oh, okay, there we go. I've never, <laughs> I've never used that. Why is it called the sponge brush tool? And I still, I'm still missymmetry. 
What? Can be selectively saturate or desaturate areas within the image. I've never used that. Why is it called the sponge brush tool? It doesn't really seem... Uh, okay, yeah, okay, getting more saturated. I don't think I would use that. Also, my brush is... Oh, okay, I, I'm probably still in the... Yeah, I'm, I'm still here in the, in the settings, okay. <laughs> oh, that's really crazy. Sorry, I've never... Okay, so you can saturate. And what was the change? Sorry. What's going on? <laughs> What's, uh, sorry, it's really crazy. <laughs> Again, wait. Now gives more correct and pleasant results. I don't know about that. But I, I've never used that. That doesn't really look very pleasant. But probably I'm completely overdoing what it's meant to do. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I think I would just make a mask and then use the adjustment layer to get like more precise results. So yeah, I don't know. I probably should do a tutorial about that after checking out what it actually does. <laughs> sorry, I've never, <laughs> never used that kind of brush. I'm sorry. Um, let's put her in here. There we go. Sponge brush. That's a crazy name. Okay. Dodge brush, burn brush. Okay, nice. Good. I've learned something new today. Allow brush rotate and size key changes with dragging. That is something I don't really use. And I, it's super useful and I know it's in Affinity 4. It's also in Photoshop, but I've never used that actually. You can hold a key and then you can resize your brush. That's not the key. That's not the key. That's not the key. I don't know which key it is. Sorry. <laughs> I tried, I tried the obvious keys. It wasn't them, um, but you can use that. You can do that. Um, yeah, with the with the keys, we can. Wait, should we? Should we? Uh, let's let's search real quick for the actual shortcut. Uh, Affinity Photo Resize Brush uh, Key. What's the key? How to change brush size. Um, option. Control and option. And then drag left and right. Let's let's check this. Nope. Nope. Oh, maybe I'm in the wrong. Is it this? One second. Let's resize. No, this is sampling, apparently. No. I don't, this is probably, this is not the right thing what I'm doing right now. Is, does anyone know what the right key is? Because I don't know. I always go up here and then set my um, brush size, which sometimes is a little bit tedious, but I know exactly the size, which I, I like to see the number. The bracket key. What, what is the bracket key? I'm sorry. I think, oh, I think this is why I can't use it because the bracket key, you don't have that on the European keyboard because when you want to do a bracket, you have to go um, the alt key, like the right alt key, and then you have to press eight. So it's two keys. Uh, you don't have the extra kind of bracket key like on the US uh, keyboard. Uh... On Mac, it's Alt, Control, Drag. Yeah, but on... Maybe it's... No, this is sampling. This is also not it. So it's it's none of the... Wait. No, this is again sampling the color. Yeah, 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 the bracket keys. Yeah, but you don't... You can't use them on the EU keyboard because it's... They are like... Uh, you have to press two keys to get there. I can try that. Let's try that. I, I press Alt and 8. Eh. Whoa. Wait. <laughs> I'm at one pixel. How can I get bigger? Oh, oh, okay. This is... 
It feels like I'm drunk. What the hell is going on? So when I click this, I can click it and it resizes it. I don't have to drag it. But it's it's resizing it in... What kind of steps are these? 30? 30 pixels? Something like that? Or is it like 10% or something? I don't know. <laughs> okay. That doesn't feel like it's more useful to me, but... It's, I mean, it's, it's dependent on your, on your workflow. Is it maybe the other brackets? Wait, so let's shift. These are the round brackets. They do, they do nothing. Okay. And then we have these kind of curly brackets. What do they do? They do nothing again. Okay. So it's like the, the like blocky brackets, but they, they switch it in like, I don't know, maybe 10% iteration. I don't know what that is. Okay. So it's, I don't know. Uh, let's go back to our list. Alt, left, and right mouse. Oh, really? Like together? Left and right mouse together? Ooh, oh, okay, that's good. I didn't know that. And it even shows you the pixel size. That's very useful. <gasps> and the hardness. Holy crap, I didn't know about that. That is kind of, that's pretty nice. I should use that in future. Wow, okay, cool. Okay. Nice, nice. Wow, okay. I, I learned so much today. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a bit it's a bit confusing because you have to go the right angle, otherwise it changes both. The hell. Okay, good. So I know that now. That's pretty nice. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for helping me. So it's Alt and then left and right key together. Or when I do one, no. Uh, the other one, no. I have to press both of the keys. That's actually pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. Okay. Uh, what else? We have... Where, where have we been? Sponge? Rotate? Allow brush? Okay, you can also rotate them. Uh, then edit a reveal canvas checkbox to the crop tool. Defaults to off. The crop tool. Let's check that. Zip. Reveal canvas. There's a darken thing here that's very nice, so it gives you a much better preview. And then there's a reveal. Did I rasterize the picture already? Maybe I rasterized it. No. Ah, maybe I did. Maybe let's resize this to a bigger size and then go to the crop tool again. Reveal. I thought it reveals the rest of the picture, but it doesn't. That would be that would be super useful. It reveals the rest of the picture and you can crop like outside of the area but still inside of the pixel of the uh, of the image, but that's not what that is. Reveal canvas. I don't know what that does. That's strange. It's it's not what I thought it is. Edit a reveal canvas checkbox to the crop tool. Default is off. Okay. Edit a new transform object separately mode into move tool. Wow. Okay. Now we come into areas that are really strange. So we have the move tool. And then, okay, we have to have a shape. Let's have a shape here. Go back to the move tool. No, because now, okay, now that we are really in an area where there's a lot of stuff, which is really strange. What the hell is this? Where were we? Added a new transform object separately mode into move tool. Hmm. Move up and down. Mouse? Oh, it's just a, uh... yeah. <laughs> I'm learning a uh, yeah. I'm also learning a ton today. I don't know what that means. It's not really described very well. Can I right click here? No. And there, I mean, up here is a smart bar, but it doesn't really. Maybe because I'm in the. Uh, one second. What's this? Aha! Uh -huh. Transform object separately. Hmm. 
Maybe if I select two. Okay, so now they are together and when I click here. Ah. Okay. So, okay. Um, what this does when I see this correctly is, let's go to the starting point. Um, so you can see here when I have them together, they um, resize in relation to each other, as you can see here. Uh, so they stay in the same ratio, on the same position, but they just resize or also um, reshape, but in relation to each other. But when I click here on this little icon, transform object separately, they transform separately. And you can see that the starting point, which appears to be the lower left corner of this uh, image, is the starting or the fixed point, and it is changing um, in relation to that starting point. So each of the objects I select uh, change different um, and keep the, the starting position on this kind of uh, lower left corner. I'm not sure if I can choose the corner actually. Maybe with our um, ah, transform origin, which is this now changed? No, I think the transform origin is uh, for all objects. Or, yeah, you can see here now it's uh, transforming around this if I hold the control key, and I can click and I can I can move this over here and now it's transforming around this area. So um, it does it for all of them, but if I do separately, then, oh, then I have another point, one second. Uh. No, it's still the same thing. If I don't press, um, if I don't press the uh, control key, then it's still the lower left corner. It's however I can, if I hold the control key, it's um, they are separately um, transforming around the transform point. So that's cool. I have to figure out what to actually do with that why this could be useful, but it's really interesting to have that. So that's pretty nice. It's very interesting. That's really interesting. Ah, no, because then they have to be different sizes. Uh, wait, let's, let's try something real quick. Uh, let's delete these layers. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create an ellipse. And then um, I'm going to set the center point over here. And I will duplicate this con uh, control J and I will resize it around this point and then control J to duplicate it again. So you can see here it's um, repeating the resize also. And now if I would select all of them and go to my transform tool and transform them separately. Okay. You see, it looks like it's like a 3D kind of effect going on. That is pretty awesome. You can do really nice stuff with that. Uh, let's switch the colors of these every second shape. One second. I will switch this to uh, white. Doesn't do it. I have to go in here. Switch that to white. There we go. And now we select all of them again. And now... Ooh... Okay, we can do some really cool designs with that. That is interesting, okay. Oh, nice. It, it looks so much 3D what's going on here. That's so nice. It's not 3D, but it's kind of... You can do some really nice stuff with that. Let's rotate that. Oh, the rotation also. Do you see that? Holy crap. You can do some really interesting stuff with that. Okay. And now if I click this again, I can rotate all of them again. And now I have like this little cone thing going on. Wow. Okay, that's probably one of the most useful additions uh, to the update. That's really cool. You can do some really awesome stuff with that. Okay, okay. Very nice. Very nice. All right, what else? 
Uh, transform uh, separately. Um, a general tool overhaul has been performed, providing editing of grids, guides, page origin across multiple tools, not just the move tool. Uh, editing grid, guides, page origins. A general tools overhaul has been performed. Providing editing guides. So uh, let's drag out a guide with the move tool. So here we have the guide. You can see the small blue line. If I now switch over to my brush. No, I can't. I thought I can maybe access the guide still. Erase brush? No. Color picker? No, of course not. That wouldn't make sense. No. I don't know why, what, how this is going to be working. A general tool overhaul has been performed providing a, sorry, editing of grids, guides, page origin across multiple tools. Maybe you have to press a button. I don't know. It doesn't, it didn't work for me yet. The patch tool now supports arrow keys for rotate and scale. What's the patch tool again? Sorry. Uh, patch tool. Is this the patch tool? The impaint brush or what? No. Ah, I, I think I know what the patch tool is. Uh, there, the patch tool. Okay. And we would need a photo for that, right? Um, let's take her. There we go. It's funny. Okay. Uh, let's rasterize this real quick. There we go. Go to the patch tool and... Ah, okay. And I can now rotate this. Oh, okay. That's really interesting. That is creepy at the moment, but really interesting. So you can rotate the source, basically how the source is um, sampled uh, to, to apply the patch tool. So that's kind of interesting. You can do some really interesting stuff with that. And you can also resize that. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's what that means. You can use, in this case, your arrow keys um, to resize that. The scaling, I don't know. Maybe also with the arrow keys. Let's try this again. One second. Uh, so let's remove her eye. There we go. And oh, yeah. When I press the arrow key up and down, I can resize um, how the um, source layer is sampled. And up there, uh, you can see the number here is changing for scale. Uh, so you can also do it uh, by hand up here. And also, of course, enter uh, the original 100% value. You can see, bam, and now we have um, this uh, patched out in that way. I'm not, yeah, I don't use that tool too much, but yeah. This is how you can use that. Pretty nice. And you can now use your arrow keys up, down, left, right um, to resize that. Let's go back to our um, original picture. Whew. Okay, what else do we have? Um, mm, patch tool. All brush tools can now be access constrained once brush has started, not just the pixel tool. And again, not sure exactly what that means because wasn't that always the way that you can uh, let's make a new layer here uh, I need the I need the brush where's the brush there's a brush okay uh, so I can hold the shift key and then um, I can draw like you click and then you whoops okay this is still connecting but you can uh, then go into one direction and it's constrained to one direction so this I think this was always the, the way this was. I'm not sure how this changed now. All brush tools can now be access constrained once brush has started, not just the pixel tool. Maybe it means also vector brushes. 
Anyone knows why, what this act actually means here? Because I think it was always restrained. You can always restrain this uh, by holding the shift key. So um, then uh, here is some more easy things to understand, like the history. Uh, you have alternate futures now. And this means that uh, normally when you would go back in the history, so um, over here, uh, down here, sorry, down here you have your history list. You can see there is all the steps that we have done. And you can go to any back to any kind of step you want. So you can click here and you see suddenly you have my picture back again. And usually now when I would change something, so a brush in here, it would um, kill all of the history we had so far and replace it with this one step. So you couldn't go forward again. So it's really bad. But you can see now that down here we have this symbol. Um, which looks like um, like a pathway in a computer on a motherboard or something. And this is like the alternate future, basically. So you can click on that. And um, I think, yeah, you can go back to uh, the other version, basically, the other uh, future that you had. So you can cycle through different um, kind of future versions of the picture. Yeah. We we have to I have to look a little bit deeper into that um, because it doesn't look like it doesn't really look like there's all the steps. Oh no, there is. Oh, there's more. Why? I don't understand why there is now so many of these cycle future buttons because ah because I have went back several times with my. Um, undo keys like a control set on windows and, and but this is kind of hardcore because this means that every time you go back with um, control c it creates an alternate future for your history and this could make the files really huge if all of that kind of information is saved in there again by the way if you save this i think i think if you save this as save as the history is gone because it's a new file. So it will also reduce the file size, but might be wrong about that. You have to you have to test this out. I will I will make an episode about file size in one of my future tutorials. Okay, but that's that's how these alternate futures work now. Uh, now that we have them. Uh, then what else do we have? The history page now has an advanced mode which shows thumbnails and time info. Really? Oh, oh, holy crap. Okay, that is super useful. You see, let's let's bring this in the middle here. So you can see here, you can see um, what was happening at that time with a timestamp. That is really crazy. That is so useful because before you could just guess what's going on. So now I can just go and bam, and I'm back at my little um, cake. That's cool. That is really awesome. That is very, very useful to have this kind of thumbnail preview. Okay, perfect. Um, what else do we have? IO, the HAEF images. I think that's an alternative for raw files, maybe. I don't know. This is another thing I don't know. Let's check this out. Uh, High efficiency image format. I've never heard about that actually. Interesting. Okay. Can now be loaded directly into photos. So this is now also support that they can contain a depth map. Um, this will also be loaded as a second layer because depth maps are typically lower resolution than the main image. Optimal smart unsampling will be performed. Okay, if you use a kind of file type. Is this for 3D? Because, or is it like for um, virtual reality glasses or stuff like that? Depth map sounds like you have kind of a depth measuring in there somehow. Um, uh, TIFF export now has user selectable compression methods. So that's pretty cool. You can select a compression now on TIFF. Um, added support for 20-bit, uh, sorry, 12-bit TIFF files. 
introduced new metadata mining completely rewritten to improve performance, flexibility and correctness. Metadata mining? Okay. I'm, I'm not a guy who's working with thousands of images because I'm like working on projects where you have like just a small number of files. So I'm not sure what you do with metadata mining, but probably selecting pictures on the date taken or the ISO resolution or any kind of that kind of thing probably is what I would guess is metadata mining or text, meta text, stuff like that to find all the pictures with the dog. I don't know, actually, I'm sorry. Metadata is now dynamically synchronized with your document. Ah, there we go. So if you resize, then export, the value will be correct. So that's cool. So it's, it's updating the actual correct image size to your metadata. Is the metadata the same as the EXIF file? Because I know that this stuff is in the EXIF file, but... Um, I don't know if this is uh, the alternate history is also in designer because we are just doing affinity photo now. Is, was there also an update for affinity designer? Um, I don't, I actually don't know. I, I didn't check. Uh, what else do we have? Introduce new blood. Uh, we have already read that. Added focal length to metadata summary view. Added a button in general preferences to open a folder from which photo will lead, uh, read lens fun style xml files if users wish to add experiment with their own lens profiles okay cool so you can do that too uh you can import your own lens profiles maybe for some layer uh, rare lenses stuff like that uh what else do we have support 16 bits uh, cmyk tiff import also very nice and then we also we just have this uh, kind of general stuff um left uh, so the new ability to control how macros are scaled aligned when playing back uh, that could be really interesting let's uh, have a look at that real quick studio macro there we go there's nothing in here okay i think they i think they're called actions right um no uh oh god i wanted to do a tutorial on them but now i forgot where they are uh library library convert strip black and white i think that's that right let's go here black and white no i'm on the wrong layer so that's a macro ah and you can, let's do undo this, no scale, so you can stretch, max fit, min fit, and align center, top, left, top, right, bottom, left, bottom, right. So you can align and scale them um, while you're doing your macro independently of the macro. So that's pretty nice. Okay, cool. I'm not using macros too much, um, but they are pretty nice um, to have. I don't think I have too much in here. Anyways, um, okay, let's go on. This, by the way, the next point is really strange. So you have added an asset panel to photo. And uh, okay, okay, so this seems to be really new because I was, I was searching today assets. What are assets? How do they use them? And I thought maybe, okay, I can make my own asset library. Uh, so you can go in here to view and studio and then you have this asset view here and I thought hey cool I can use all my branding stuff and put them in here as assets but the strange thing is if it says import assets you go in here and it says it has to be a .af assets file which probably you can create in affinity photo or somewhere else I don't know um, there is not really any kind of good information on the internet right now or any kind of asset libraries to download. There is one you can download uh, from your download section on your Affinity Photo website, which is this one here, uh, which is a bunch of elements you can use to uh, design uh, 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 like an app GUI, uh, app interface. You can see here you have different kind of 
uh, input fields and the buttons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I didn't find any kind of other assets that you can download. Maybe I was missing something, I don't know. Um, and I hope I can build my own asset library because this could be super useful to create different kind of branding things and stuff that I need to uh, use for all the different YouTube covers and all the other kind of social media things that could be really useful. Um, but so far didn't really find much on how to do that. Or maybe you can just drag that in here. I don't know. Um, so I have to figure that out, but this could be really useful. And they have now this kind of window for the assets. All right, uh, let's go back. Yes, yes, you can make your own macros. And they are kind of limited and kind of strange in the way they are working. Um, so don't expect to be like, you just click record and then uh, it records everything and plays it down the same way because uh, some things they can't be recorded and other things can and some, I don't know, it's very strange. I, I was thinking about uh, making a macro pack until I found out that it's kind of kind of hard to understand what is actually going on and what is actually recorded and place back in the macro so I was I thought like this is too sketchy for now to really uh, cr create a product from that but you can actually do your own macros and create some really cool stuff um can change it to alt or be like photoshop yeah uh -huh. I don't I don't think you can import photoshop macros you can try. I've never tried that actually. Maybe that works. Okay, let's go on with the list here. We're almost done. New cube setup mode for grids. The what? Again, what's going on? I hope, I really hope you have like a 3D grid for painting, but I don't think that's what that is. Um, how? Wait, I have to close these windows real quick so we have an actual overview here. What is the other one? Is library, uh, studio, and library. There we go. Let's resize that. Um, layer. Is it layer grid? Where's the grid? I don't know. Geometry? That's not that. No. Um, on view? Grid. Grid and Access Manager. Preset. Isometric Plane. Oh, holy crap, what is this? Is there a preview? Can I see what I'm doing? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I have a preview down here. It's not overlaid on my picture. Up Access, I don't know. Okay, first Access sec. So you have two Access and then you have an Up Access advanced and you also have oh my god what is going on this is crazy okay do i have to maybe use my mouse uh, uh my buttons here how can i access the other areas here that's not doing anything can i not rotate this in any kind of way just on one axis i'm missing something ah there we go there we go okay so this is like up and down, and this is around the middle axis. Okay. Intermediate divisions, let's say six. Okay, so we have more lines here. This is probably the color of the grid lines and the subdivision lines. Let's recolor this. Okay, so now they are pink. Uh-huh. Add for snapping. Horizontal axis, do not add. Plane, perpendicular axis, add for constraining. This doesn't, ah, okay. Uh, oh, okay, and now I can see it on my, holy bear, wow, this is, this is insane. Okay, so you can now, you can rotate this put it up and down maybe I make this white wait let's cancel this real quick and I will make uh, the background black so you can see what I'm doing 
There we go. Let's go back to view and then to our grid and axis manager. And you can see now, if I rotate this, all the lines are following. So that's really nice. And then can also um, put this up and down. So that's very nice. Cube scale. Oh, I can also scale it. I'm not sure if the divisions are doing that much. That is really interesting. I don't see any way to have an horizon. This is kind of an endless plane. Oh, okay, so this goes uh, like I say, sideways rotation. This is around the axis. This is up and down. Okay, that's pretty cool. Automatic mode. Hmm. I don't really see, whoops, I don't really see a way to add, um, to add a horizon to the cube because that would be nice for 3D painting or something. But that is actually pretty amazing. Here's some presets. Here's an isometric preset, so you can now do gaming graphics in here, probably stuff like that, isometric designs. That is incredibly useful. Very, very nice. Okay, so we now have that. That is really, wow, really amazing. Okay, cool. So you have this kind of isometric grid, uh, grid now that you can really adapt in a lot of different ways and also the color and all the kind of things. And the subdivisions, I'm seeing them right now. You can see down here. Oh, holy crap. If you zoom into, it also zooms with the stuff. So this is actually vector uh, lines. It's not getting pixelated. You can zoom in here endlessly without it getting pixelated. And you can see here now the subdivisions. So this is super awesome for designs, for digital painting, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't have a one point or two point perspective or a horizon as far as I can see, but it's a good start. It's really cool, very nice. So that's that's really awesome. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, where did we left off here? Cube setup for the grid. Um, Add fill with primary or secondary color. So that is also kind of nice. Uh, you can go in here. You, let's make a selection like this. And you could now, before you would go in here and say fill, and then you have all these kind of selections. And now you can go in here and say fill with primary color or fill with secondary color. And it does it right away. And the, it didn't work on the first click because the background is black and the primary color also is black. So uh, this is why you didn't see um, it actually happening, but it does work. Okay, what else? The batch process dialog now fully supports expressions for height and width. Available constraints are width, height and DPI, which is really cool that you can enter this now in the batch process You so you get out what you actually need from width, height, and resolution, um, and don't have to go back and, and do stuff uh, to, to get it in the right size. Uh, lock size was added, uh, lock guides, sorry, lock guides was added to the menu. And by the way, um, one was someone was asking this on Facebook, um, how can you now uh, split this up in three or four or five uh, different parts, stuff like that. Um, uh, what you can do is you can go up here to view and then you can go to guides manager and you have this kind of window here and you can say uh, you want to have uh, horizontal guides and vertical guides. So you add new guide and here you can add um, a percentage on how um, big this should be. Can I write it in here? I think this is just the name. Uh, wait. Oh, I can just go like that. I think, did they change that? Do I remember this wrong? Column guides. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, what? 
One second. Uh-huh. I think this is a new function that you have these kind of lines here because these are they don't they are not guides. Wait. So I enter here, let's see, if I enter here 25%. Yeah, no, doesn't didn't work. Uh what 1080 one second uh we have the document size it's uh, 1920 so let's go in here again one second uh to the guides manager and i go in here and say 1920 times 25 percent no why i thought am i misremembering how this works what the hell is going on here ah wait let's times 0 0.25 which is 25 percent yeah okay so this adds it at 480 and then you can do a second one uh, also with the pixel width um, times 0 0.5 and then you have one on the middle and probably is a simpler way which I don't remember right now but you can see that this actually works uh, times 0 0.75 and now you have uh, the guidelines at thirds so yeah probably a better way that I don't remember right now and you have this kind of crazy stuff that's going on over here uh, with these column guides this has to be new I have never seen this before it's really interesting it's also a bit strange, but hey, okay, we have column guides now. Do they stay around? They stay around. Okay, interesting. Uh, does stuff snap to them? Let's let's check this out real quick. Where's my... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so... No. Yeah, stuff does actually snap to them. That is really interesting. That's really interesting for design stuff. Okay, I didn't know that. That's that's nice. That's really cool. Okay, ah, uh, what else? What else do we have? Support of drag and drop AF styles into photos. Support to drag and drop AF palettes into photo. What? I mean, you can create palettes. So does this mean if I drag a palette in here, it's automatically added to my swatches? I guess that's what that is. So you can see here, you can have these kind of different palettes. You can create your own, which is actually super useful to have uh, for different designs. Um, and you can now just drag them in here, apparently, and they will be added. So you don't have to go through this kind of menu uh, import palette. I suppose that that's what that is. Um, then Photo now supports custom document presets, a popular feature request. That sounds really cool. So let's um, look in here. And I, I think I know what that is. Yeah. So before you had these kind of presets, but you couldn't really set, you couldn't really save them. Uh, when you would save, you would enter here any kind of information and then you save it and say, Photoshop, uh, sorry, <laughs> not Photoshop, a Facebook size uh, for, uh, for example, Facebook timeline, Facebook page, Facebook ad, which all have different image sizes for, I don't know why it's really crazy that Facebook is driving us so mad, but they have a ton of different image sizes. So uh, you would have to enter this by hand every time because it, you couldn't save it. And I think now, yeah, you can create a preset. So this is really, really useful. Um, to have these kind of presets um, for your stuff. So enter the information, then go here, create preset, give it a name and you can also rename it, delete the preset, all that kind of stuff. So that is super useful. Um, so you are super quick now in creating all of the different stuff. Um, really good for workflow. Okay, what else? Um, a new blend mode, Linear Burn, has been added. All right, let's check that out. Linear Burn. Um, let's take this picture. And then 
Maybe we should hide the guys because this is getting a bit crazy here. Um, grid. Um, no. Wait, when I hide the guides, these kind of column guides are not vanishing? That's... Okay, that's kind of strange. Guides manager. Okay, I go back to one and I hope they're gone now. I think they are gone now. Okay, cool. Uh, let's resize this real quick. There we go. And then we take this guy here. Drag him in here. Yep. Resize. There we go. Okay, so now we can go to layer and we go to... And by the way, I think this is also new that they separated them in these kind of little um, lists here that I suppose are content related somehow. Yeah, they are. So you have here, for example, in this kind of with a little separator, you have overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light and hard mix. So all kind of these light related things and then come uh, in, a, in a separate area, a difference, exclusion, subtract. So they are a little bit easier to understand, easier to see. Uh, we weren't looking for linear burn. There we go. So... Um, I'm not exactly sure what it does. We will Google that and read what it does. So let's do this real quick. Linear burn. There we go. Blending modes. Let's see. There's probably good description here. Linear burn. Looks at the color information in each channel and darkens the base color to reflect the blend color by decreasing the brightness. Blending with white produces no change. Okay, so this is based on the brightness or darkness of the values and they change the picture, basically. What is the color burn compared to? because we already had color burn, looks at the color information in each channel. So that part is the same. And darkness and, and darkens the base color to reflect the color, the blend color by increasing the contrast between the two. Blending with white produces no change. Ah, okay. So the color burn is increasing the contrast and the linear burn is decreasing the contrast. Do we actually see that here? Uh, so this is getting brighter. This is brighter and this is darker from the way it mixes. Okay. So this is the explanation of the difference between the two effects. Interesting. So now we also have linear burn and not only color burn. Okay, very nice. So let's go on. What else do we have here? We're almost done. We are almost done. Uh, with our live stream. So uh, new move inside outside commands have been added useful for quick operations on clipping masks, etc. Oh my god, there's another thing. I'm not sure. Move inside outside command have been added to what? It would be it would be nice if they have a little bit more information on where it has been added. Let's make two shapes here. Where could this be? Should we skip that? I don't know. Layer. Uh, does anywhere know where this move inside, move outside is? If there is a designer update, I will also do a live stream about that. But this has to be after the 18th of June because I will be in Barcelona for a week. Um, I will, of course, pre-record tutorials so there is no gap on my channel. But um, 
I can't do a live stream when I'm not here. So um, this has to wait until after the 18th. But then if there is an update too, I will also do a live stream uh, for Affinity Photo. And also more tutorials are coming for Affinity, uh, sorry, for Affinity Designer. I will do a live stream on the update and also do more tutorials on different things. And also if you have suggestions, because I'm kind of, uh, with Affinity Photo, I really know how and what to do as uh, tutorials. But with Affinity Designer, what I've mostly done is like creative projects where I create monsters and landscapes and all that kind of stuff. And I'm kind of not sure what kind of tutorials I could do. Maybe should I go through all the different kind of tools and explain what they do one by one, this kind of stuff. Um, because most of designer with vector graphics is more working with the different curves. It's there is not so much effect stuff in there like uh, uh, in 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 Affinity Photo. So it's not too much about combining different kind of blend modes and effects and uh, adjustments and all kind of stuff. It's more about uh, drawing curves in a in a certain way and uh, like cutting them or adding them together, stuff like that. Um, so. There's not too much to explain, but maybe I should go through the basics of Affinity Designer. I'm not sure where this is with the move thing. Ah, yeah, it's already out. I didn't know that. I have to look into that. Ah, uh, I will. Oh, I'm uh, Barcelona is just to have some time off, relax, inspirations also, taking some photos, drawing a little bit, all this kind of stuff, um, just to get away a little bit from here. And yeah. The, the, this a strange habit of us to go to other places for a short time and look at things that um, are different and then come back <laughs> for no apparent reason, which I think is something that our time does and nobody before that in mankind has been done. They did exploration, of course, stuff like that, but they didn't travel thousands of kilometers for no apparent reason and then come back. Uh, but it's nice. It's cool to to meet other cultures, other people, all that kind of stuff. Okay, I don't know where this kind of move thing is, so I'm I can't really show you where that is. I don't know what that means. Move inside, outside. There is a move before and a move behind, uh, the, which is this. No, this is insert uh, before and behind. But I don't. Um, there is also where you can move the layers up and down, which I would suggest you just drag the layer because it's so much faster. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay, so let's go. Um, what else do we have? The hard mix blend mode has been improved, technically, but not really something we can show. Uh, new provider options have been added to the stock panel. There we go. This is why I've never seen that before. Support for Unsplash, Pixel, and Pixbay. So the complete mode is free because these are the only three modes you can use. Or maybe you can add some more. All these providers offer full resolution stock imagery, which is free to use. So that's pretty cool. Although I have to say, and I'm not sure about this. I'm this is just my personal impression. With Pixbay, I am often finding that it looks like someone has just uploaded stuff they found on the internet. So I'm not sure if it's a hundred percent legit what's on there. Maybe they have an algorithm to check if this stuff is copyrighted. Uh, with Unsplash, I feel really safe that almost everything up there is really legit uh, and from the actual artists provided for you to use for free. So, But that's just my personal impression. Um, yeah, Numerous text improvements have been made, including new features. Okay. Um, we would need some more detail on that. Maybe we see some, let's uh, write here, um, hello, and go into our text um, tool. I'm not, I, I write at first sight, there's language, but we had that before. Optical alignment, wow, what is that? Ugh. Manual font, holy crap, what? What was that? No, that was the, that's something different. Oh, that was just, I think it was just snapping to the grid. Ah. Uh, wait, let's select the text. I have to look into that. I don't know what this does. 
ATWY. So I I suppose here you can do something with characters. So you can I, I suggest oh because we don't have the characters in here. So let's go with H and E and then we change stuff. And now it's changing. You can see here stuff starts to move around. So this is based on the characters. You can now adjust things. Um Again, I'm not sure how this works exactly. It seems to do something, but I can't really 100% tell you what this does. But it's it's really interesting you can do that. Uh, you can do character-based changes. But the characters are still connected, so it's not like because now I have an L in here, but it doesn't move the L individually. So I have to look into that. I have to look into that and see what this actually means. Optical alignment. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I really can't explain what this is going. Um, sig significantly, a significant stability improvements when working on non-local files. So when you work, you have your file over your LAN network um, or on USB drivers or any kind of other uh, way where it's not stored directly on your... Um, uh, internal hard drive which I guess a lot of people have their photos on external hard drives I would always suggest if you have a computer and it has an SSD card first of all I would just suggest that you upgrade your computer to an SSD drive which is a solid state drive uh, which makes it incredibly much faster in the starting with reading files writing files all the kind of stuff and then suggest to drag the files to that drive in your main computer and then copy it back after you're done this of course is if you don't uh, uh, like plan on, on, on adjusting thousands of different files it's like if you work project-based uh, drag it on your main disk edit all the pictures you need and when the project is done you put the project on your external backup drive or the storage drive whatever and so you have it much closer to the like motherboard and your computer and everything is a bit quicker and more stable um, because in worst case your external drive is sleeping and you want to save or change something and then the program is knowing what is going on and everything is breaking down and you've lost a lot of work uh, because you're um external hard drive didn't start in time so uh to be on the safe side i would put it on the internal ssd drive which are super cheap uh now and also uh by the way uh, a side uh, note um because it is a solid state drive if you drop your computer or you do anything with that um or you are i don't know in a car and it suddenly it's rumbling and you have your laptop open stuff like that it doesn't do anything it's like you have your cell phone in your pocket it's also has a solid state drive in there like a usb stick or something movement doesn't corrupt it doesn't uh, break it uh compared to the old disk drives where you have this needle um like hovering on top and every kind of uh, vibration can actually destroy the disk so it's a lot safer uh, for your data uh what else do we have here um yeah, numerous text improvements, stability improvements, significant PDF import export improvements and fixes. That sounds pretty cool. Um, huge macro and batch processing improvements, new welcome screen layout. Okay, I guess. And all new samples. There are samples? I didn't know there are samples. Okay, that's cool. So you probably have sample files so you can download to see what others have done with the software. It's nice. Um, numerous other bug faces. Okay, so that was the list, at least on how it is here on the on the forum. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of really cool new uh, things happening in Affinity Photo. A lot of functions I didn't even know about. So that's really really cool to have. And um, yeah, wait, let's go in here, landscape, have. A nice landscape to look at uh, so yeah that was really interesting I was really fun to go through all these kind of new changes and things that are happening so much crazy things coming and really a lot of improvement to affinity photo I hope you enjoyed the live stream um, I want to do more live streams on my channel I think it's really nice um, to 
be able to connect to you. I have to really learn to read the chat because it's kind of hard um, to do that and at the same time do stuff here. Uh, so, but I want to improve that. I want to do more live streams. Like I said, suggest to me topics um, that you want to see. And by the way, again, I want to remind you that um, on Facebook, uh, we have, uh, where is it? We have a page. So please, and this is really, please, if you want to write me, write me on my Facebook page, not as a private message, because it's always kind of strange and confusing if you get a text from someone you don't know on your private um, um, Facebook, because there's a lot of scammers and, and kind of strange people on Facebook. So it's always kind of what is going on here. And when it's on my official Facebook page, it's a lot more I understand what is going on uh, um, and that you try to reach out to me. And also we have our um, Reddit group that you should use. Um, so this is also an important part here. Uh, I will post I post all of my videos here and other uh, interesting stuff. And you can also post your stuff. You can post inspirations also or resources that you find, um, stuff like that. You can also, if you create tutorials, you can post tutorials too on the channel. I will look a little bit into the quality because I want to have a high quality tutorials on the page. Um, but I suppose the quality should be good. And you can see here, you can also get feedback on your images. Um, for example, here, um, Kevin is a very active, one of my early supporters, um, super active in the community and especially on Patreon here, he has created a picture, he's shared it on Reddit and I give feedback on, um, how I would improve that, um, how to work, um, with that. So he tries to recreate the tutorial and I give a little bit feedback on that. This is for patrons only, but, um, if you go to my patrons, sorry, I have to show this too. There we go. Uh, this is starting at $1 actually. You can see here, um, there we have the $1 tier and you already get seven day early access to all of my videos. You get feedback and you can join uh, the Reddit community and you get this cool little patch here, which is important. You need to have the badge. So you have to sign up on Patreon and Reddit with the same email address and connect the accounts because only if you have the badge I can actually give you feedback on the Reddit because otherwise it would be super confusing for everybody. And by the way, you know that I, I put out these content packs every month um, and you can buy them on Gumroad, but when you are one of my Patreon supporters, you actually get them for free. So with uh, as a $3 tier, you get the small pack for free. At the $5 tier, you get the medium pack for free, which is the price of the pack. Uh, but it's still cheaper because you get all of these other additions being my patron. And there's also the $10 tier where you get um, the pro pack for free. And by the way, um, if you're one of my supporters and you get the medium pack uh, for free, you get also a 50% discount for the pro version. So... Um, you don't you you pay nothing basically extra you are my patron and then you pay the five dollars extra and have the pro pack so it's basically the same um that was a really bad explanation but i think you know what i mean you get a discount so you can if you want you can upgrade um and there is something else. Oh yeah, uh, 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 um, you get uh, you get full length videos when they have a longer video, which is also important, especially for the Affinity Designer files, because vector working with vector is pretty slow. So sometimes a video is an hour or longer, where you create something like the landscape video, and you can watch it in full time. It's without commentary because it would be a really crazy to talk for an hour or longer and explaining every step, which would make the video even slower. Um, but you can watch it and see what is going on. And that's really helpful. Okay. That was everything <laughs> about the self-promotion and of course information. So you understand all the other things that are going on on my channel. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next tutorial, the next live stream. And, um, I, I hope you had fun and yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, let's, let's have a look at the chat. If there are other questions, if you have more questions, write them now. Uh, so I can answer them because uh, before I go, so we can do a bit more uh, Q and A. Uh, how do I detach a window so I can drag text from one window to another?
uh, well, that's super easy. You just um, let's create a new file here. Um, so now I have this file, and here is the other file. Wait, why is this jumping around? There you go. So um, you have this, and you just click and drag it out, and so you now have two windows, and you can um, now take something from here. Uh, there we go, and you can take this and drag it over here. Does it work? No. Okay, that was super. <laughs> that was that was a perfect presentation right there. This is how you do it. It doesn't work, but yeah. Um, okay, which I, I'm not doing it that way. So this is uh, I don't know how to do that. Let's let's do it how I do it. Um, so what I do is I go into the file uh, where I have the source layer, for example, these ellipses here. Uh, let's, let's use all of them and um, group them real quick. And then what I do is, uh, let's make them visible, so they're those. And then I control C, like Caesar, control C, and then I go to the other file, control V, like uh, victory, and I copy them in there, basically. I paste them in there. And now it's here, it's the same thing, like on the other one, you can do this with um, uh, with text, with pixel, with vector, uh, it will take all the effects, uh, bring them over. Um, uh, one thing, uh, if you have layer effects, always um, be sure that, um, uh, for example, here with the outline, uh, that you click on this little uh, uh, wheel icon here and you click scale with object, because if you don't do that, and then you um, and then you resize. Let's go. So now I have clicked that you see it resizes. It stays relative the same to the object. But if I have not clicked that, if I have not clicked that one second, um, let's go to effects again. It doesn't scale with the object, and that means it looks really crazy. You can see it goes small, and the 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 the, the ring stays big, and I go big and the ring uh, stays the same, so it, it looks suddenly really small, the line, and that's not good. So yeah, that's that's important to have. Okay, any other questions? How to move center of object? The center of object is really easy to move. Um, uh, let's hide this here real quick and make a new object. So uh, let's recolor this real quick, uh, maybe a better color like this okay so when you have your move tool up here move tool uh you here have this um uh how can i say um uh, how is it with snipers you have this kind of uh anyways so you have this points icon here you click that and this shows you this kind of point here in the middle and then uh, when you mouse over it, you get the mouse with the four arrows and then you can move this around so when I put this down here in the corner and then I rotate, it's rotating around that corner. It's super useful. And when I move this over here, for example, in this area, it's rotating around that area. So this can be super useful uh, for, for designs and any kind of purposes um, to have. Yeah, okay. So this is how you move the uh, center point. And of course, if you have snapping turned on, it also snaps uh, to the center lines of your object or to other objects. You can also put it outside. You can see I can put it over here, then rotate, and it's rotating around a point outside of the object, which sometimes is also very, very useful. All right. Any other questions? There's a little bit of time delay. I will, I will wait a little bit. I hope is anyone still here. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Oh my my oh, my throat is really sore. How long was this stream? Wait, did we start at seven and now it's ten? I stream for like three hours. Oh my god, I I can't imagine how the people do it. Like there's on Twitch, they stream for eight hours. I wouldn't have a voice after eight hours. It's crazy. I would, I guess I would have to go to the, I don't know, <laughs> throat hospital, something, get a new new uh, vocal cords. Mm. Oh wow. Okay. Um yeah. Are there any other um so what did the transform position mean in the little box at the side? The what? 
to transform positions. What do you mean by transform positions? Was there like numbers? Because this could be the guidelines or like snapping. Is Was it that? Ah, I think I know what you mean. You have the numbers down here. Um, you have the numbers down here. You can see. So X and Epsilon, this is um, like the origin point of the object and changing. So you can go in here and change this kind of value. And X, of course, goes left and right. And Epsilon goes up and down. Uh, so you can enter this value and you can also go uh, change the width and the height and uh, you can click here to lock the aspect ratio and then it resizes, um, everything resizes at the same time and keeps the ratio of the object. And you have rotation and you have shear and shear means uh, the bending to the side. And uh, you can only shear in uh, like vertically for some reason or horizontally I always mix them up um, so but you can also shear by going with the mouse close to the side of these anchor points and you get this arrow that's pointing up and down and then you can drag it with your mouse which is a lot more um, easy and quicker there you go all right um, uh, yeah, these uh, squares. So the squares are the origin point of from, from where this kind of stuff is happening. So if you click here and um, let's go for the height and let's set the height to, I don't know, um, 800. You can see that it's, uh, uh, this was the width, but the width now it went to the left as you have seen. And if I put this point on the right side and click 800, it goes to the right side, you can see. So uh, this is what they are. They are basically the anchor point uh, which stays fixed while the rest is uh, transforming um, around that. Uh, so, and it's not the white point as you can see, it's the bigger point. I'm not sure actually what the white point does. Is the white point maybe the center point? That might be, I'm not sure right now. Okay. Okay, that's that. Thank you very much. I think I really uh, 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 stop for now. If you have more questions or stuff you want to see as a tutorial, please put that, uh, maybe not in the chat, in the comments, uh, which I don't think they are right there at the moment because they only come up when um, the video is posted. Anyways, you can, you can write it in the chat. I can see the chat even after the video stopped, I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, we will figure it out somehow. Okay. Um, see you around and uh, thank you for watching. Bye. And now I have to figure out how to quit the video. Wait one second. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Have a good night. Bye.